Okay, okay, the hype is getting absurd with Black Myth Wukong as it just releases its benchmarking tool for the game for players that are ready to test their computers and see how it holds up to the new graphical power that we're getting from this Chinese game, from Game Science, a developer that has been focused on producing this game for a long time and gamers are excited, so excited that they're packing in playing the benchmark tool so much that it's trending in the top 10 of games being played on Steam. And I think you heard me correctly. This is trending in the top 10 of games being played on Steam. People just testing out their computers and seeing if their graphical output is matching with some of the standards set in the game. And I think that's the type of hype you want just a week before your game is about to release. People are trying to test their PCs and the performance of this game on their PCs. And it's just showing people are prepared for this game. And it's just showing the stark differences that we're seeing in Eastern games being developed between the Eastern games development sphere and the Western games development sphere where people are hyped to test their computers just for this game. And we're having the opposite reaction with some games that are coming out in the Western games development sphere, specifically Sony and any other game associated with a sweet baby ink title of course i'm talking about concord firstly this is one of the biggest games that were supposed to come out under sony under firewalk studios who was purchased by sony that was made to make a big splash into the multiplayer first person shooter market and it has done that in an epically terrible way where no one is really playing this game and the steam numbers are bearing it out there is no response from this player base even in its beta of course it hasn't fully released yet but you're supposed to tell what numbers people are playing with in their beta and having a peak of 2,388 people with an average 500 people playing your game in a 24 hour cycle that is just showing that no one is hyped for your game and you just compare it to the benchmarking tool for Black Myth Wukong you see the stark difference there 85,000 people played it yesterday or tested their computers with the benchmarking tool just at its peak and I think that's the thing you want to see from a game that you're hyping up that you've been investing in for years at a time and now you have this response from the fan base where everyone wants to clamor and play your game and this is something that we're seeing with Black Myth Wukong throughout its release cycle where it just keeps growing and growing the hype for this game and it's just showing how you can make a game in the opposite way where it's not for game players and I think that's what we see with Concord where it's a game that is made for political progressive motivations the character designs the gameplay the look the, the designs the environment the people that are promoting it this is a game that was made for a political progressive audience of people the modern audience that are more hooked on the looks and feels and pronouns of the characters rather than actual gameplay that is worth investing your time in and i think this is a result of this corporate political mindset kind of coming together and creating a game that no one wants to play and i think that we have this similarly with some of the sweet baby ink games that have been coming out specifically flintlock was a heavily promoted sweet baby ink game that was supposed to actually take up the market this summer and be a formidable single player game that was promoted by almost every social media games journalist platform out there trying to entice the game player to actually play this game and when you get down to the nuts and bolts of this game no one is playing it you can see this with one person playing it an hour ago with a peak player count of 295 people 93 people over a 24 hour peak this is the type of game you're getting from the AAA studios in the Western developed sphere right now where they're just focused on these politicized motivations that are unconcerning with making anything that is fit for the game player to actually want to play. And I think this is the opposite that we're seeing with Black Myth Wukong. It's making a story, something that's unique to the culture of China. It has people's interest because of that. It's not trying to make something monoculture like Sweet Baby Inc. does with a lot of the properties it's involved in. It tries to make a multicultural mushmash of something that means nothing to anyone that is uninspired and I think that's what we see usually with a sweet baby ink property but we can see the inspiration from this game we can see the culture and that's what's drawing people to black myth wukong we see something otherworldly different and we're interested in seeing that perspective and take from a different culture and i think this is the thing that political progressivism and sweet baby inks of the world that are trying to inject multiculturalism into every single product this is what they lack to see this is the thing that they lack in understanding of other cultures making the things themselves that they want 
not to play. I think when you see China making this game without any Western influence, it gets people's interest because it's something completely different. And I think that's what we loved about Japanese games. That's what we love about Korean games because they're not following the Western perspective, the cultural perspective. They're doing their own thing. When you have companies like Sweet Baby Inc. trying to go to Japan, China, trying to force their personal multiculturalism, their political progressive messaging into a game, we get mad at it as gamers. Just like how they try to extort Game Science, the developer for Black Myth Wukong, for over $7 million for consultancy fees. And of course, this is all allegedly a rumor. It's not verified completely, but this goes in line with what we've been seeing in the video game industry where these consultants come in and try to force their personal cultural perspective down the throats of companies and in effect tarnish and ruin the game and i think that's what we see with some of the games coming out nowadays specifically games like Concord, Flint and Lock, like Star Wars, Outlaws, like a multitude of other properties that have been coming out lately where we just see the forced culturalism, the forced partisan politics and political progressivism that they want to push onto the game players and the game players are pushing back where they're not playing those games anymore. They're waiting for games like Black Myth Wukong. They're playing the benchmarking tool more than any other Sweet Baby Ink games that has come out this year, which is crazy to say that, yes, a Black Myth Wukong benchmarking tool is getting more play than Flintlock, than Concord, than a multitude of Sweet Baby Ink games that have come out. That's why I say a benchmarking tool of Black Myth Wukong is dominating the market more than Sweet Baby Ink. And I think this is a, a, a fun time within the video gaming industry. Firstly, they're bringing in beautiful character designs. That cannot be denied with the first Ascendant. We're getting designs that people actually want to see included within their games and we're getting great gameplay. And I think that's what we see with Black Myth Wukong. We see something that has great gameplay, great design, great imagination. And I think this is what we're hoping to see in the video gaming industry. And it just shows that all is not lost, especially with East Asian game developers. And I'm, I'm hyped to see what is to come from this. Of course, we cannot say anything until officially the game is out. But I'm happy to see that a game like this is succeeding over games that we've been seeing in the Western games development sphere that have been poorly calculated, poorly formed, and poorly marketed towards a wrong demographic of people that are not interested in games. And I, I think this is the, the difference that we're seeing here with Black Myth Wukong. When you make a game for gamers, they come and play it, even when the game is not even there. When it's just a benchmarking tool, they're playing it. And I can't even imagine the numbers for Black Myth Wukong when it actually comes out this August 19th. So I'm excited for it. Hopefully you're ready to play the game. I'm gonna play it day one. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be there the next day for a few days, but I'm gonna play at least four or five hours before I have to go for a week. So it's gonna be fun to play it. Hopefully you're excited just like me. I'm excited for Black Myth Wukong. Tell me what games you're excited to see out of East Asia, China, Korea, Japan. There's so much games coming out that are dominating the West. And I think Black Myth Wukong is gonna be at the lead of it but you leave your comments tell me what you think like comment share subscribe this is wagner knows why catch you next time